talk about everything, play music in between, tune in and enjoy Chad's underground scene. Talk, talk and music, you know what I mean. Hello, we are back. Part two of Chad's Underground Scene with Casey Royer. Okay, we're back. You got a million stories, so man, just come up with a random one and tell me. A, okay, check this tell one me out. a great rock. I got a good one. I got a good punk one. rock story. I gotta, here's the best one. Pull my finger. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, that one's not as That's good, a sad it? story. Okay, check this out. Okay, we're on tour with the Misfits, right? And we're in uh, San Diego at 4th and B, I think. And um, I'm in the parking lot. We had a tour bus. All, all of us did because we're on the road and stuff. And the Misfits had their tour bus and stuff. Yeah. So Jerry was on the bus, and these two kids come up to me and go, Can we meet Jerry? And I'm all like, Well, well he doesn't really come off the bus. So they showed me a picture of these two they are about 21 years old, 22, and they were Marines, and they had this Misfits banner in, in Baghdad on day one of the, the invasion. They held up this banner with the bombs blowing up in back of them and stuff, and like machine guns going off. These kids took the time to hold up the banner in their like, you know, camouflage stuff. It says, and Misfits, it says Misfits, right? had like, you know, had die for me, or had that, yeah. you know, that skeleton thing with the, you know, martini glass. And then I look at the picture, and I'm all like, oh, shites. I'll be right back. So I went on the, the Misfits bus and told Jerry, and Jerry looked at it and just goes, oh my goodness, just go get him. And I went and got him and took, they went on the bus and talked to Jerry and walked out with all this merchandise. And Jerry just tripped out because he's all, man, that's the most dedicated thing you could do probably is hold up the band's banner yeah, in the yeah. middle of Baghdad being invaded in the Persian Gulf. And, and there was tracers going off in the back. I'm all like, oh my god! I wish I had that picture. I should have taken a picture of that picture. And it's a, it's amazing what you see with fans going to punk rock shows, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that you look up to, right? You go, man, wow! You did that. There's so many things people do, right? Yeah. That's amazing. Well, and you've said, seen they, a lot of that, and they tell you a story, and you're like, I was that, there. That beats all, all my stories. <laughs> Their stories, but right, that man. them standing in Baghdad with that beats any story I can That's come up with. That's a pretty good one, huh? Right? I can't beat that story. Yeah, that I is bet. pretty awesome, man. The Misfits <laughs> have made their mark, man. They, yes, yeah. I love those guys. You know, one time I got to sing uh, Blitzkrieg Bop in, in in Philadelphia, while Di was on tour on the Fiend Fest tour 2007. It was the it was the it was the Misfits, the Damned, Agnostic Front, the Dickies, Di, and Balzac from Japan. It was the best most frantic tour ever so we're playing in philadelphia and we're all like cruising around we've been on tour for about a couple two three weeks and jerry's all hey man you want to sing blitzkrieg bob case and i'm all like hell yeah so i'm up there singing blitzkrieg bob with the misfits in front of like about five thousand well maybe about two thousand people it was like a oh yeah we're yeah. right in the middle kind of like arena not huge but um with uh and just, so i'm singing the very finalized hey ho let's go with jerry only walks right up to me from misfits marky ramon playing drums on that tour oh sweet and J des cadena one of my best friends of all time playing s guitar for the misfits walks up right next to me on that side i was encompassed by like the ramones the misfits and black flag yeah. and, and, and singing hey ho let's go and that was just it's a that superstar. was a memory that was yeah, a memory it's an all star i didn't realize it. punk rock band i didn't right? realize it until i saw the picture of it and i'm all like oh my god it's like i was with like lou reed johnny cash and a and in frank sinatra there you go frank frank sinatra <laughs> but yeah that was a good moment you know how about you how about you chad what, what's a great moment other uh, than having the same name as the uh, brandon fraser from airheads right yes yeah remember chad <laughs> airheads brandon chad. fraser i'm chad what were they called the lone rangers <laughs> Remember, let's start a band called the Lone Rangers. You can't be Lone, plural, Rangers. Well, I don't really understand that part of the, the English part of that title. So one of mine was probably at one of my most missed clubs, Fender's Ballroom. Oh, Fender's. So we played one night and it was Mentors opening the show and then Easter played 
and then Agent Orange, and then Adolescence. That just was a great a, show. That was Bill. a great one. Yeah. <laughs> I, I was there, right? And yeah. Oh, that's yeah, right. And well, then I, that, I had to have been there. And yeah. that night, we're in the middle of our set, and you probably remember at right above the stage at Fender's, there was a there was a beam that went all the way across. Oh yeah, you get up on that thing, you put so, yeah. your like legs and stuff, and you'd army crawl. Right. Yeah. So so we're mess. in the middle of a song, and I do like. I'm gonna do the greatest jump, and I jump up, and I hit that beam, and it oh. knocked me clear out. What? Right, immediately, really? oh. I was out on the floor, laying on the floor with my bass on top of me, oh, and nobody in my band knew. They kept playing the song. That's who I went to the and, bathroom on. And then I, I shoot, I'm sorry. And then I came to, and I, I was like, "What the hell?" And, and I could still hear him playing the song, and I got back up and started playing. And oh my god, that's awesome. And I, and. And then at the end of the show, we're back. We're back in the uh, backstage area, and a couple people come up to me and they're like, "Dude, that little stage dive thing you did on the stage where you rolled around on the ground and then got back up—that was the coolest rock and roll movie." <laughs> really, I just fell down and knocked myself I, out. Oh, yeah, I just knocked myself oh, dude, out. Dude, that is classic. Oh my God, the dumbest things we've ever done are the most bitching things oh, we've yeah, ever done. Yeah. Wow, it's a fine line between stupid and clever. I, and I had a lot of fun ones there. I, had, I was doing another show at Fenders, and my cousin, we had, we had done a couple shows where this pyrotechnics guy came in, mm -mm. and he did. Uh oh. That was when the friggin' all the '80s bands and on Sunset Strip, we're starting to do the fireworks and yeah, all the yeah. explosions. Fire pods, Michael and Jackson. So we got this guy and he did a couple Whoa. big shows we did. Yeah. And uh, and then my cousin goes, dude, I could do that when you're you're playing Fenders in a, like a month from Was now. Was he a he fire goes, blower? He could, I could do it for you. And so he, uh, so I don't know what the hell he did. He put lighter fluid or something on my base and yeah. so in the middle of the set he lights it. And then I'm on fire. I'm it's not around. burning you, really. <laughs> no, not yet. Not yeah. yet. Will you stay moving? And, uh, <laughs> yeah, that's and the next that. thing, he just pushes me onto the ground and he throws this blanket over me and he's going, dude, it wasn't going out. <laughs> we're lucky we're alive. And I'm Chad. going, look how you impressed know. they are. Yeah. Got our fingers. We still got our fingers <laughs> right. and stuff. And, yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, that, that's a good one, though. Yeah, you're all like, I am on fire. He's all, don't worry. Yeah, it's don't like worry. lighter fluid. Don't lighter, worry. Fluid, lighter fluid I'm will burn this far off your I'm skin. I'm a professional. Yeah, if you put it on your arm, light it on fire, and keep going like this, it won't burn you for at least, like, until it burns oh, off. No, exactly. You know, it's a test, and, you know, it's an action test. You know, you could catch your hair on fire, but, you know, it's, it's you know, it's, a, it's you know, it's the things that happen when you take chances. So tell us a little bit of the history of DI. Oh, shit. Because that was straight from adolescence. I don't think you missed a beat. You well, went straight from adolescence into DI. Into DI, and yeah. then, then Radolescence well, you came see, along DI, later. DI yeah. was kind of like a, when I first, when I moved out of, uh, of the house, remember I told you the mom yeah. on television, mm -hmm. I started college, we moved into a place called Brea Beach. I named everything where I moved the beach because I live at the beach. I love the beach. If I was at an apartment away from the beach, it was Brea Beach. So we lived at Brea Beach, and my roommate Steve Roberts and uh, me and him just made up a, 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 a f funny band, a fun band called Di, with uh, Daryl, this guy next door, you know, and. We're just jamming, making stuff up. Like I, I hate surfing in HB. Yeah. Some of the early DI stuff that we were just playing in some my the, living room. Some of the greatest surf yeah. and skate songs. So we started awesome. like an under, yeah. a second band under the adolescence, and then, and then uh, the adolescence kind of crumbled, and then DI songs and DI gigs started excelling, and then Rick ended up being in DI <laughs> from the adolescence, yeah. and, yeah. and then it just grew and grew and grew so we segued quite easily because like it's weird like we built up to a certain level and people kind of were liking di more than the adolescents at that time i don't know why i remember one time at fenders like we almost sold the place out and then the adolescents played and not very many people showed up you know kind of like change of colors changing of the guards you know so and then tony was in the flower leopards and you know i don't know how far that really went you know they didn't really tour that much. I don't know why. He's been in a few bands that have frazzled. And all the other bands kind of frazzled, but D.I. just kind of carried on, you know. Even though D.I. started in 1984 when we did, did the movie Suburbia, we actually started in like 1979 when we were just making up the songs just for fun. I was the bass right. player. I was the bass player, Steve Roberts, who was on the, uh, on the uh, uh, Welcome to Reality EP. That's the one guy that took Rick's place. Steve Roberts was my friend. Right, yeah. and, you know, so we started the first D.I. And then I remember one of the gigs that you played 
and uh, Christian Death was really you, close. You got on year. stage, and you played like three or four songs, and then you go, "I got this brand new song, and I want everyone to hear it, but I don't know the lyrics yet." Uh huh. I and, said, oh. and then you whipped out uh -oh. a piece of paper. You just oh. out of your pocket like this. You go here it is. Everyone. And then you started the song, and you had that piece of paper. What song was and it? You, I can't remember this Darn. song. It was so great. There's was, lots of uh, video archives. I out can't there. remember this song, but it was so great. I was like, oh my god! And, he, and it was because it was brand new, and you mm -hmm. and and you nailed it. It was. It sounded great. I was like, oh, this is awesome. That's classic, man. It's and it, classic. it was an inspiration to me. I'm going. You know what? You should always do brand new stuff because it's great. Yeah, because it's in the moment and people are gonna they're gonna love it and everyone loved it. Right? Yeah, it was see, like, that was the awesome. difference between punk and like yeah. uh, you know standard rock then because standard rock would like practice their songs and go out and act a little arrogant and yeah. all messed up and like like we're everything. Oh but yeah, punks will just like like write the songs oh, at just, the gig. Uh, yeah, I mean the, the, the yeah, nonchalant the, moment, the nonchalant yeah. like a, approach was so comforting in like a, a pressury musical world at that time. Journey five thousand tracks. We're all know. Oh, yeah. Sid yeah. Vicious, uh, uh, you know, and Steve Jones and Johnny and, and Paul Cook, four noisy boys, and so we're all changed, you know, for life. That first, that was my very first single was uh, "God Save the Queen" on a seven-inch blue with the Queen's picture on it. And that was, yeah, I got right, that yeah. when I was a junior in high school. I had my ra my record player in my room at my parents' house in Fullerton, kind of by Cal State where we all had our studios and stuff and just like putting it on and just you know that guitar progression you know for God Save the Queen is just so dynamically loud and just da -da 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 -da. you know what do you do with that when everything else is all like glittery and magical music like oh like yes amazing, yeah. Genesis a uh, foreigner which had its place but it wasn't Big in my stereo. <laughs> yeah, what a weird thing. <laughs> it, was fun to, it was fun to listen to. I, I was like, Iggy too. Iggy. I was like, this is so weird. What is going on? I don't. <laughs> oh, no. But it was fun to go see the shows because oh, like, yeah. when I was like younger, yeah. like a freshman, we'd go see like Aerosmith and Aerosmith and like you know, in fact, who's and playing Zeppelin again? and just all these hippie bands and we're all like kind of hippies, a little hippied out. But oh, in fact, I saw it at Orange not, County, not much, Orange County Fairgrounds. Flaming Lips are going to be playing. No way. Yeah. <laughs> it's so <laughs> glad. I was like. I gotta go to that. It's a nice time to be alive, <laughs> my friends. <laughs> so yeah, it's great to be here on the Chad Show. The Chad Show is like one of my favorite shows right now that I haven't seen yet, but as soon as I do see it, I'm sure I'll feel the same way. Right, he might be on it. I might be on it. Well, I'll like that episode. This one's my favorite episode that I haven't seen as well. But so D.I. Is, is active God, to this man. day. D.I. is going crazy so tell right us now. what's going on okay. right now with oh, D.I. because that's exciting. D.I. is like, like, we're like, like, you know, we're like Bachman Turner Overdrive. Everybody loves DI. We played Rebellion Fest. We were in the top 10 critics list of all the critics. There's like 10 critics. We're like in the top 10 of the hundreds of bands. We're doing really good. We have a new guitar player, Trevor Luca, who's from Long Beach. So he kind of fills the two guitar player portion of DI. Mm -hmm. And then all the guys, Clint Calton, guitar, Trevor Luca, you know, guitar. They're both lead guitar. And then uh, Joey and Eddie Tatter, you know, on drums and bass. Yeah. And then me, and we've been playing for 20 years now. We all went to the same high school. We all went to the same junior high school, except for Trevor, he's in the Long Beach kid. And um, and you have some new recordings. Let's see, the recordings would be, Cleopatra Records just picked us up and they've got as many, uh, I think I've got like 12, 13 albums out now, or CDs, like there's a couple, we just re released a greatest hits CD. It's called uh, DI A to Z. And it's got building blocks, you know, very childish, you know, it's stacked with letters on them. And that's on Cleopatra Records. It has 24 songs re-recorded, you know, say, greatest hits that, you know, we, sat, we took off of all of our older recordings and re-recorded them in a better content. And so, you know, we've got that album out and uh, a re-release of uh, On the Western Front on Cleopatra Records, which was on Suburban Noise, but right, they yeah, kind of bellied yeah. up. So On the Western Front is a re-release. We have a four-song EP called United We Slam that we did in 2009, and we're presently re recording our next album. We have four songs done, and 
we're on a roll. And you're like, do it. Everywhere yeah. we play is like, you know, with two guitars. It's funny, Trevor's like 27, you know? So and he's then got, a, must, yeah, must he's got a little voice. He sounds like Alfie Agnew, like in, in 1981. <laughs> oh, yeah, Alfie is. Have a good time. He sounds like a little guy. So, so the vocals between Eddie and me and all of us, they sound like they did back in the day. And the kids love the songs. I mean, they grew up with the songs at this point. It's like 30 years in, and they just... Are they they're bonded with all of our music, right? Yeah, and so it's just like you know playing older songs in front of you know what it feels yeah, like, oh, yeah. to, you know how people appreciate your your work. So DIs, it, we're just going off. We just played like last weekend in OB, sellout crowd. We're playing this week in you know Huntington, Fitzgeralds. We got shows all over the board. In fact, we did a 30 day tour in Europe right before the pandemic, and uh, packed the house. Yeah, it was a tough tour. Because we didn't take any roadies or merch guys. Right, so you had to take I set up the drums yourself, for Joey because yeah. I'm a drummer, and, and then, then Joey set would set up the merch. merch <laughs> and then we'd like be, you know, it was but 29 shows in 20 in 30 days. And that's punk rock. You do what you need yeah, to do. Yeah, and we killed it, man. To we get killed through it. it, right? You just oh, do it. You it just do it. And so you don't fun. worry about it. Yeah, the emotions, the connection you make with people that like grew up with you, say in a different country. I mean, it's just like it's just un undescribable. It's just like it's just like a feeling like like. You, like when you just your wife just had a baby and you just go like this oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> well maybe not quite like maybe, that but, maybe but you know a little close, close. You know, halfway but no but the, the emotional connection saying like uh, people say that i helped help their lives having some sort of music like mine to to grow up with right or they yeah. thank me and stuff one guy in like you know support lauderdale i signed his neck because he had a di dog this little dog dog it's, um and then I signed his neck. He's all, I'm inking that in tomorrow. And I'm all like, oh, what? Nice. I just can't even believe yeah, it. Yeah, no, it's crazy. Yeah, it's nuts. I mean, I'm boasting. And but you it's never like know intense. when you're going to run into those people. Yeah. yeah. I, I played this. And, and then it's funny. There's young people that are the same type of fans, right? I, I was just like we're kids I was playing this yeah, brewery. <laughs> and, uh, and after I played, and I was playing acoustic, right? I played an acoustic show. And then after the show, I was out in front and hanging out. And this, this young guy comes over. He was in his 20s. And he's like, you're the guy from Easter, right? And I'm like, well, what? I'm looking at him because yeah. he's 20. He's yeah. like 50. Yeah. How'd you know that? Your <laughs> and dad got the record? And, and, he, and he's like, he goes, I know your whole history. I've followed everything. I've, I've, he's, he's like, he goes, I got this video of you guys, and it, it's like the history of your band and the whole thing, and it's something that we put out years yeah. ago, yeah. right? And he found it, right? It's Wow. And he goes, and, I, and then he goes, and check this out and he pulls out this album and it's a blue vinyl album we put out a limited edition blue vinyl album that uh -huh. there was only so many of those right he pulls it out and he goes can you sign this i know my fans uh, have more stuff than and, i have and i'm just looking at it and i'm going i can't get that album right yeah god it's weird <laughs> we're buying our own material now at this point awesome. hey uh, ebay um, can i have my some of my stuff but yeah everything else is going good you know cool so we're going to break away to a uh, di video enjoy Don't hang yourself, okay? It's called Richard Hung Himself. The Beatles were stabbed into the walls. The executioner's curtain call. Fighting back, he found his life drowning. And there was no way out. Cause Richard Hung Himself, Richard Hung Himself. It happened just the other day. Jesus caught and pushed him off the shelf. He thought he'd find a better way with stealing. And it was all through. And Richie only knew. Cause Richard hung himself, Richard hung himself. It happened just the other day. Jesus caught and pushed him off the shelf. He thought he'd find a better way. His life suddenly flashed right before his eyes. What a swinging guy. It won't let you go. Throw it all away. Throw it all away. Throw it all Throw it all Throw it all away. Swinging in his room, Richard won't come out to play. Cause Richard hung himself the other day. How the years seem to fly by. Richard Hunt 
supposed to be crying. Everybody cry. So since this show is about the underground, we went way into the underground a few years back and way for down. several years and there was a band with a bunch of secret members. And uh, I'd like to talk a little bit about that because uh, Casey might have been in that band. Well, my brother was in the band. <laughs> my brother, Clowny. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, Clowny. Clowny, Clowny Royer. Royer. Yeah, yeah, Clowny Royer. See, like, when I was born... So back we're going to talk about the Yeasty Boys. Tell us a little bit about that history well, and how that happened. That's not me. That's my brother. My brother, <laughs> Clowny, was separated from me at birth. Nobody told you all about it, with right? birth. Yeah, there was three of us. There was Carl Boyer, Clowny Royer, and Casey Royer. We were triplets. And we were separated at birth from uh, St. Joseph's Hospital in Orange. And we just... Recently came back together. No, it's me. <laughs> so, uh, no, Clowny Royer is in a band called the Yeasty Boys. And the Yeasty Boys was a collection of all of us from Orange County, Darren, uh, Dirt Clown, bass player, the ringleader. We themed everything on clown stuff, and it was the funnest things. We'd sing, we'd sing punk rock songs with clown topics. Oh, yeah. Like, it's a holiday in Clown Bodia. Yeah, it's and awesome. And silly stuff. And we got to be popcorn throwing Olympiads. Yeah. And when we uh, really. And it was just. It was fun just frantic. From, from the go, it was fun. We all had our characters, yeah. our faces, and that stuff. And uh, uh, that band was really cool. We played a lot of shows. We got banned from a lot of clubs in Orange County because of the sheer total trash, yeah. trash heap we left behind us. Yeah, no, so, like it's yeah, at least so, two feet of like you know, you know, balloons, cotton candy, yeah, popcorn, so, ticker tape, silly string, and smacked <laughs> up, and everything we could throw <laughs> in the truck and throw at the crowd. It was mayhem. It was almost like a, a war. Oh but, yeah, but yeah. yeah, but the Yeasty Boys are great, man. We did a couple things. We did a a video called the Bozo Bomb, which is on YouTube. Uh, my character Clowny and my character Carl Boyer are both in that video. Have you seen that video? It's like yeah, where yeah. the bomb hits yeah, Orange yeah, County right, and everybody yeah, turns yeah. into clowns. Yeah. So we did this video, Bozo Bomb, on a, a songbird. Uh, you know, Diane, uh, you know, like uh, Roberta Bird, you know, from PNX News. She right, was yeah. a video yeah. maker at that time. So she made this video for the, the clowns, the, you know, the Easty Boys. And it's called the Bozo Bomb, and it's really hilarious. It's so funny. Everybody's yeah. in it, like, you know, that, you know. You just clown up if you want to clown up and, and you show, show up, up dressed yeah. up like a clown yeah. to the gigs. It was just refreshingly yeah. I was I was lucky enough to actually play a few gigs oh. with you guys because you came down to South Bay and played. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. A and I booked the I booked the show, so I booked my band on with I you I think guys. I saw you at that outdoor party in that neighborhood. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Was that it? Yeah, yeah. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Clowns in the South Bay out in this normal neighborhood. And all the kids are coming out of the houses looking at us. They're like, what are these clowns? We, we had a school bus, right? So we'd like take the school bus and drive to gigs, you know, and we'd be drinking drinking beers, you know, in the bus. It was horrible, you know, but we were clowns. We could do anything and we were bulletproof. Remember that. Yeah, and then we played with you once at Dollhead, and who doesn't want to play Dollhead? Anytime you get you a chance what? to play Dollhead, We did the play Bozo Dollhead. Bomb. We shot the Bozo Bomb, same time, same place that we shot the uh, Amoeba, a yeah. short film, at the yeah. Dollhead. That's the Dollhead, California, on Lincoln Avenue and the 5 Freeway, Anaheim, California. Thank you very much, right by Disneyland. Um, other than that, like, the Yeasty Boys were great, and then uh, the ringleader, Dirt Clown, moved to Hawaii, uh, set up a tent there. Everything we speak in is clown content. So he took his uh, elephant over to the Hawaiian Islands, put his big top up there. What happens? Lava ate the whole circus. Dirt clowns now in his new house in Hawaii. Yeasty boys haven't played oh, in a while. That's crazy. My my cousin was there when that happened. When all that lava, lava. flow came down, and he had lava. to move. Don't he had joke. to move because it was right on his front lawn, right? He was like, yeah. So the Yeasty Boys are mor morphing into another band called the Clowns, and the Clowns are a, a you know some of us in the Yeasty Boys, and we're just going to resurrect the Yeasty Boys, and who knows, maybe like Dirt Clown will come back and laugh with us and honk our horns right, once and you again. You can do it all again. Yeah. Do it all again because it's just fun. Music is just fun, like as you very well know. Oh, I love it. Yeah, just people are paying t attention to us. And Any you know way what? you can get yeah. a bunch of punk rockers together, it's a good day. Yeah. <laughs> But it was weird because, like, we wanted people not to pay attention to us, just like our friends only, pretty much, you know? Yeah, right, yeah. Like anti social, you know, anti, you know. But and now, it was so fun. But now we're socialized. To go. Yeah. Now everybody we're socialized go, yeah. and we're an item, like, a, like an yeah. item, a scannable, like, you know, barcode item. Like, like Chad, yeah, beep, right, yeah. okay, <laughs> records, here we go. Online, YouTube. <laughs> we're, like, we're like actually uh, products. We're like, you know, boxes of intelligence. And feel free to buy all of our stuff because we're broke as a joke. <laughs> nice. No, I'm just joking. But uh, thanks for having me. And uh, okay, so here we go. Know. We're gonna break away to their video. Enjoy the Yeasty Boys. Yeasty Boys. It's so fun. Honk 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 honk. <laughs> I love the Yeasty.
ladies and gentlemen. This is Carl C. Boyer from KLWN News. Disturbing story, we're receiving reports that we're being attacked by a small, virtually unknown country west of Afghanistan, better known as Clownistan. It seems these psychotic clowns have launched a bomb attack, and its target is Orange County, California. We'll keep you posted. Video. So, how do we get a hold of any of your stuff on the internet? All right. Well, um, Cleopatra Records out of Los Angeles is where you buy all the new stuff. I think it's about six albums, and another six albums or seven are available on Nickel and Dime Records, which is the earlier Triple X collection that they sold awesome. off right. to Nickel and Dime. Um, and, that, and, and that's Rattlescence as well. And the Rattlescence, we just pretty much have our own website on Facebook and right. stuff. You can just look up Rattlescence. Find out when they're playing. Yeah, and DI. How do you find out when DI is playing? Uh, same? DI, same thing. If you want to book the Rattlescence, just go to our website on Facebook. And uh, if you want to book DI, we go through Artists Worldwide out of Los Angeles, a guy named Chuck Bernal. You heard it here. That's a promo you for you, Chuck. <laughs> but uh, that's all good. Chuck's a great guy. But uh, other than that, we're just putting out records. We're still just as busy as, it, you know, it, it, you know. I work like three, four days a week on just doing the band and stuff. It's yeah, that's me, that's me every day. I'm doing yeah. some kind of music or so, some kind of project. And 
That's awesome, dude. It, it just keeps you vibrant and happy and keeps you young, doing what yeah. you want to do, Keep right? Keep good energy. And like this doesn't hurt sitting here in the ocean. And yeah, there's little waves. Look at that talking swell. Talking to a friend, right? Looks like we had about like two to three foot south <laughs> That's swell. That's two to three foot, yeah. Winds, winds from the west about like two to three miles an hour. It's yeah. actually looking pretty good. I might go paddle out in a while. We yeah. Surfboards all over the place. So, hey, hang 10 in East Berlin. Follow Chad. Chad's a great thing to follow. I follow him. I, mean, I am now. So and, uh, yeah, so thanks for coming out to Chad's underground scene with my friend Casey Royer, and remember, it all starts in the underground. Thanks, you guys. Thanks for having me, Chad. Music.